Hello, I'm Julie McNeil, and I work for Central Missouri Community Action. We operate a program called the Foster Grandparent Program. This program is funded through the Corporation for National and Community Service through AmeriCorps. We recruit and train income eligible seniors, age 55 and over, to volunteer in schools, Head Start centers, and nonprofit childcare facilities. Volunteers work one to one with children 21 and under who have special or exceptional needs. Volunteers work with children in Head Start and elementary schools on literacy skills, behavioral or mental challenges, and other academic areas. With younger children, volunteers may work on gross and fine motor skills as well as pre-literacy skills. Volunteers work 15 to 40 hours a week building relationships and tutoring children. This program manages 10 counties including Randolph, Howard, Cooper, Boone, Monotal, Audrain, Callaway, Osage, and Montgomery counties. The Foster Grandparent Program is operated out of Boone County. Volunteers must meet the income guidelines. Supply a physical from a physician verifying that an individual is mentally and physically able to volunteer. Complete a criminal background check. Have the ability and interest to work with children. Be willing to accept supervision. And complete the training process. Benefits to becoming a foster grandparent include an hourly stipend of $2.65 an hour, a hot meal at the volunteer site, transportation or mileage reimbursement, excess accidental and liability insurance, paid time off including 13 holidays, orientation training, and recognition opportunities. Foster grandparents in Mid-Missouri are placed in 11 school districts and 8 Head Start facilities in our 10 county service area. Educators recognize the value of one-to-one -one tutoring, support, and intergenerational guidance. According to StateMaster.com, which is a website that gathers information from the U.S. Census Bureau and the National Center for Educational Statistics, 33% of Missouri students are reading below grade level at the fourth grade. Students learn to read from kindergarten to third grade, and from fourth grade on, students read to learn. Reading deficits are critical for the remainder of their academic careers. 21% of fourth graders in Missouri are below grade level expectations in math. Again, these statistics were taken from data compiled from the U.S. Census Bureau and the National Center for Educational Statistics. About 82% of our seniors are volunteering in elementary schools or Head Start centers. They work one-to-one -one with special needs children with a focus in literacy and math. Reports from teachers and stories from our seniors both reinforce the educational and relational value of volunteers. This is also validated by our foster grandparent evaluations that are submitted yearly by teachers and daycare directors. Listen to some excerpts from letters written by volunteers and teachers about their involvement and experiences in this program. Well, due to my age and health, sometimes there are days when my body says stay home, but my heart always says go to work. When I arrive at the daycare and see the smiling faces of those children, and they just run up to me and hug me and say, Grandma, we're so glad you're here. It just makes my day perfect, and I forget all about my aching body. We have two students with significant behavioral needs that were able to make real connections with Mayetta and came to trust her. They made strong gains in our classroom because of her assistance and care. Working with children makes me feel special and I look forward to getting up every morning. Going to work has given me a positive outlook on life. Being a foster grandparent has just made a great difference in my life and being with the infants and taking care of them, it makes me feel important. When I began doing the midterm assessments, 
I know Mrs. Helen will be there to take my list of students who are having difficulty with one or more assessed skills, and by the end of the quarter, they will be able to meet grade level expectations. I've been at a Shepherd School for eight or nine years or so. I used to uh, walk my grandsons to school and then go back home. And my, those teachers need a lot of help down there. And so after I retired, I, I worked 30 years for an ophthalmologist as the office manager. And I saw children there too who needed glasses for the first time. Oh, they need special attention, you know. And I've had grandchildren and children of my own. And not, not everybody can work with children, but I have a special interest in seeing that they get a good start. So maybe that's something I could do. So I came and asked the principal, what could I do to help you? So they helped me uh, find then the foster grandparents and I got hooked on it right away. I'm not a teacher. I do what the teacher asks me to do and tells me to do. And uh, sometimes I help her grade and see how somebody doesn't understand this fact as uh, these children that I will see today, they're not quite understanding some points about this math yet, and uh, they need to work on that with someone. I try very hard to be positive. I am not the one, foster grandparents aren't the ones that point their fingers and say, don't, you know. They say, I like the way you're doing that. Oh, you write so well. I know how important it is, the attitude that you learn in elementary school, you have for the rest of your life. And if you have a person helping you who has the right attitude, especially a little smile and look you in the eyes kind of attitude, uh, you're somebody. I'm important, I'm special. If you get that early, you can have that the rest of your life. Mm. Well, first of all, my name is Nate. I'm a foster grandparent. And being a foster grandparent could be a, mean a lot of things. I mean, it's a way to help the community, a way to give back something. But most of all, it's the way you interact with the kids and seeing the smile on their face um, when, as they get to know you as, as um, their tutor. I mean, it's, it's a whole different feeling, you know, um, to get a kid that had problems adding and subtracting, now he's having problems doing dividing and the multiplications because he was able to work into through that and subtraction. Those are the kind of rewards that I like. You know, this is just an opportunity for me to give back a little bit. You know, it's not much, but I think if I would have been had, I would have had someone help me like this when I was in school, my grades probably would have been a lot better and I probably would have stayed in college. But, you know, this is just a way to give back and help a, help a kid that is struggling through school, struggling with one specific thing. And that's the one thing I struggle with them on, with whether it's math, whether it's the reading, whether it's, you know, science. They teach me science, but all the other things I kind of know and we work together to improve their, their, their skills and to improve their motor skills, you know, their thinking pattern. We try to improve that. Um, you know, so being a foster grandparent could be a lot of things. You know, it, it could be a lot of things anywhere from teaching to helping the kid learn to walk because it's all about building the confidence in themselves and that's something I try to work with them on also it's just build their confidence so like I said being a foster grandparent could be a lot of things you find when when you get into these schools it's not always just adding and subtracting and reading and and stuff like that uh, sometimes you gotta let that kid get to know you and you get to know that kid and interact with that kid and and uh, you know, help him with his challenges at the same time. He helping you with yours and you don't know it. For more information about the Foster Grandparent Program, please contact Julie McNeil at 
443-8706, extension 1131. And thank you for watching. Thank <music> you.